Thanks, Evan. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Friends, visitors here in the auditorium, as well as all of you joining us online, it is good to come together to worship, to worship the one true God, the creator of heaven and earth. So today, as Brother Beng Chuan announced, we conclude our five-week series on discipleship. Discipleship is about our own personal growth as a Christian, as a follower of Christ. We do not want to be short-sighted and have forgotten that we have been saved from our past sin. And as Apostle Peter tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, Instead, we strive to make our calling and election sure. We make every effort to add to our faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control. Self-control, perseverance, perseverance, godliness. And godliness, mutual affection or brotherly kindness and love. Because if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And if you practice this, we will never stumble and we will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Today, also, we enter the month of October. And October we take the time to focus on mission. 24th October is our Mission Sunday, and the last week of October will be our anniversary, 57 years of God's faithfulness to the congregation that meets at Pasir Panjang. And so when we focus on Mission Sunday, we want to dedicate the month of October to talk about mission, to think about mission, to, to reflect on our role in God's mission of bringing the good news and sharing of His blessing to people all over the world. And so it's right that we consider our own, our own discipleship before we move towards reaching out to the wider community, to the regions beyond this, our own walls, beyond your own home walls, as you worship from home. Um, and to share the good news of salvation and the bountiful joy, there is joy, there is joy, there is blessing of being a child of God. And so it is right that we spend the last five weeks talking about discipleship, how we be followers of God. So a bit of summary in the last five weeks, Brother Mac Esmila started us with responsibility of a disciple. Even though we may have uh, some old history that may be wrong, may be not following God, but we can, he tells us that we can choose to follow God and point our children to God and thereby we build a community of disciples and then we can begin a better future regardless of the legacy where you come from. In the next lesson, Gareth talks about the way of the cross. How grace overcome force. And I like that he used the passage from Luke 23, describing the crucifixion. And he picked out the three responses of Jesus and how Jesus set an example for us to choose grace over force, to choose self-denial over anger, to choose forgiveness over vengeance and commitment to God rather than our own impulses. Today, my lesson also covers something similar, crossroad. Crossroad may mean that crossroad, we'll see through your picture, but crossroad also the road of the cross, the way of the cross. This is my uh, focus later. Uh, in the third week, Simon tells us when life hurts and we have gone through multiple kinds of difficulty, 
these past two years. Some may think God is gone, and some are angry with God. Simon tells us to look towards God regardless. God is still there. God is with us, even to the end of age. And last Sunday, Terry Harrison took the story of the Good Samaritan and how when we come upon people in pain and suffering, where do we walk? Do we avoid? Do we go towards those in need? And he talks about the fact that if we do that to help somebody, there is risk, there is cost, there is time. And yet, as a disciple of Christ, choose to be a good neighbour. And so the come to this morning, I want to talk about crossroad. Crossroad as in, from the passage, I've been read for us from Mark 8, 34. Take up your cross and follow after Jesus. And so this crossroad is more the road of the cross. The road that Jesus took to the cross. So, looking behind... Um, So, looking at this, we want to remember how we can, uh, from the Gospel of Mark, the word that was read was, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. And Jesus tells us this. Taking up the cross, follow Jesus, it's about traveling in Jesus' path. That cross is a symbol of shame, of suffering. We often choose to avoid the difficulty. Yet this is the path that Jesus took. And this is the path for us as disciples. And how we can do that is the hope that is joy ahead. And this is what Jesus looked to when he took the cross wrote, and this is the hope and joy that we can have to motivate us to take that path. When, when the word cross and road come together, it means something like this, cross road. So, so my title today has got two meanings. One is the road of the cross, the way of the cross, like Gareth put it. The other one is a cross road as in a decision point. Often we come to times in our life, a season in our life, where we have to decide, what do we do? It could be a daily thing. It could be a decision to, to follow our desire. Or as you just put it, um, not my will, but thy will be done. And so this is a decision point. And when we come to that decision point, you look forward, shall I take this path? But you also look backward, how did I come to this point? Did Jesus bring me here? What has God helped to bring me to this point where I am? And you look back, you can see how God has brought you to this, the difficulty, the joy, the successes. All this gives you an idea of how God has been with you and it makes the decision easier to take the road of the cross. When Jesus took that cross, it also involved dying. And so the, verse, the next verse in Mark 8 was, um, For whoever would save his life would lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. Losing our life for the sake of Christ and the gospel at another time, in another place, like the disciples in the first century, or during the Roman time, losing our life for the sake of Christ and the gospel does happen. The disciple encountered that. The Bible wrote about it. But for us in this day in Singapore in 2021, it rarely happens. We have not been faced with these challenges. I want to present to you another way of looking at this dying. Because the 
Bible also talks about living sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, verse, um, verse 1, I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, as you see God's mercy working in your life, present your body as living and holy sacrifice. This sacrifice, this dying, is a living sacrifice. This dying is not physical death, but dying to self. Yeah? So this is about a living sacrifice. It's about giving up the old way of life and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Not to pursue our own will, but to live a life worthy of Christ Jesus and His love for us. And this is the road of the cross. It is about dying to self, right? And another way to see it of dying to self is surrender. Surrender our will to God's will. Like what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane when He prayed. Thy will be done, not my will. And what do we do to deny ourselves? What does it mean to take up the cross? There are things in this world that we will love. First John chapter 2.15 talks about do not love the things of the world. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are things of the world. We are to avoid them. Because they will pass away. We live for eternity. We are sojourners in a journey to eternity. These things of the world will pass away. And this is what we mean by surrendering these things of the world. There are temptations in the world. The Bible writes about them. And this temptation is common to men. And all have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. There is no one righteous, not even one. Those are three parts of Scripture that talks about the state that we are in. But when we deny ourselves of things of the world, there are also things of God and the will of God that brings us delight. I pray this during Candice, Candice One's wedding from Psalms 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Think about it. The Lord will give you the desires of your heart. And John 15, 7 talks about, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And so here, when we give up the things of the world and we have the word of God in us, we will desire the things of God and the Lord will give you the desire of heart. When our heart is aligned to God, God's will, then all this will work out. So these two verses about Psalms 37, 4 and uh, John 15, 7, the Lord promised to fulfill the desire of our heart. It is possible when His Word remains in us and our hearts are transformed that we desire God's will and we seek to please God in the meditation of our heart and the words of our mouth. When our will is aligned to God's plan, then these things will flow like a river, a blessing to you and a blessing to the people around you, the community that you touch. And that is the purpose of God, that His name be made known to you, for you are His disciple, you are His royal priesthood, a holy nation. The crossroad also talks about a suffering. There's a kind of suffering that he had to go through to bear upon himself the suffering to atone for our sins, sins of the whole world. And as a punishment for the, our iniquity taken up by Jesus, who is the Lamb of God. By believing that Jesus is our Savior, the Son of God, we will have eternal life. At the point when we are baptized, when we are immersed into Christ's death, and when we rise from the water of baptism, we are reborn a new creature, a new creation, a new person. The life I now live in the body, I live for Christ, who loved me and died for me. In this passage of 2 Corinthians, I highlight verse 5. 
the suffering of Christ abound in our life. Some translation overflow into our life. But also, through Christ, His comfort overflows. Can you think of the suffering that Jesus had to endure? He was punished, though He was innocent. Have you been in a situation that you were admonished? You did the right thing, but they scold you. Happens sometimes. Uh, have you been mocked and scolded by people that don't understand your situation? You, you are this, you are doing this, but then not understanding, they scold you. People mock Jesus. Jesus was the son of God. And they say, if you are the son of God, come down and save yourself. They didn't know what they say. They didn't know the context. They didn't know what they do. Because they didn't know that Jesus had to suffer for them, for the redemption of their sin. And I reflect on this, and I find this a comfort if you can take uh, time to reflect on the time when you suffer, and you reflect back on how Jesus also suffered the same thing. I tell you an example as an elder of the church. Members do scold me. Um, they say, You call yourself an elder. You're so educated. Why are you so stupid in this thing? I mean, as a human being, my pride will say, um, I cannot take it. I will be very angry. But the word of God restrained me. I've hidden his word in my heart. And I now, looking at this verse, this is the suffering of Christ overflowing in my life. It was very difficult to take that people will scold me. But then I remember Christ Jesus, who he was, and people mocked him. And that was how he felt. And so I can relate. Oh my God, that was how you felt. If this thing, this person didn't scold me, did, the members of the church didn't scold me about that. I wouldn't have experienced that. I wouldn't understand the suffering of Jesus Christ, the shame, the scorn. And so this means that by saying the suffering of Christ overflow into our life. And the good thing is that so through Christ, our comfort overflows. And then we can tell others, yes, you don't have to retaliate. You pray for them. And so this is Something that I also want to relate to young parents. Uh, we have many young parents in the congregation this, this season. I remember the days when I became a parent. Then I realized, oh, that's how my father and mother felt. The things they had to do for me. As a kid, as a teenager, you rebel against your parents. You, you, you think they're wrong. You, you do all kinds of things. But when you become a parent, you suddenly understand more fully, what is it that your parents have done for you? And it's something difficult to explain. It's something you have to experience. And so this is the same thing with Jesus. When we go through difficult times, the shame, the suffering, if you can remember Jesus, He walked through that crossroad for you. Then you understand. And you can have comfort that there is uh, hope and there is joy. Because Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble all kinds of trouble. But take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. And so that's our encouragement. Um, Apostle Paul in Philippians uh, 3.10 actually invites suffering to his life. You know, he says, uh, Paul in Philippians chapter 3 says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I also want to know the fellowship of his suffering been conformed in his death and so somehow attained to the resurrection from the dead. That was Paul's desire. He invited the fellowship of suffering with Christ Jesus so that he can understand. And why would Paul do this? What is his motivation? What drives him to take the path of cross, Jesus Christ's cross? He says further in verse 14, 314, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which 
God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. That is his hope. That is Paul's motivation. The cross that leads towards heaven. And so today is a short message. I hope you will find encouragement from it. I want to conclude by looking at, um, to summarize that this crossroad again. In different seasons of a time, we come to life, a time of decision to decide which path to take and whether to carry the cross and take the road of the cross, deny ourselves, even though it is something that we may desire, and not to follow our own desire. As you make the decision, I want you to think of how you arrive at this crossroad. Did you come to this point by your own strength, by your own wisdom, by your own power? Do you see also God's hand leading you, empowering you, guiding you to this point? And when you see uh, God's hand in it, you will understand what you have to do. Because if God didn't help you through it, you may have ended up at a completely different place. And we, I want to leave you with this encouragement of how the Lord Jesus was able to bear the cross. We fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our, of our faith. Because for the joy set before Jesus Christ, He endured the cross. For the joy set before Him, He scorned the shame. And He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we fix our eyes upon Jesus because He's the author and perfecter of our faith. We do this by fixing our eyes on Jesus, the joy set before Him, the joy set before us, that we can take this cross. And when you walk the cross, God will bless you with the desires of your heart too. Ask whatever you, you wish and it will be granted to you. And so, I encourage you to walk worthy of the manner, worthy of the Lord, and to please Him in every way, to bear fruit in every good work, growing in knowledge of God, being strengthened with all the power according to His glorious might, so that you may have full endurance, patience, joyfully giving thanks to God the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. So this morning, I invite you to respond to the message. If you're online, there is a way for you to put your comments on the Facebook or write a message, WhatsApp. Uh, if you're not yet in Christ, it is an invitation for you to be a child of God, to respond to God's invitation of love in, baptized, in baptism. And those of us who are baptized, those of us who are Christians, I hope that this message will encourage you to offer your life to the Lord. As we stand and sing this song, Lord, I offer my life to you.